Well, big data is uh, essentially the uh, digital tracks of our daily activity, the recordings of whatever we do every day using uh, digital technologies that leaves tracks somewhere of what we have done. Maybe phone calls with our smartphones or any kind of interaction using social media, social networks, uh, transaction for paying or withdrawing money with our ATM cards or navigating around with our cards with uh, navigation devices. Everything uh, that uh, we use that it is connected to the internet, that it's uh, able to uh, create uh, recordings, will keep track of some of our activities to a very detailed uh, level. And summing up all our data with the data disseminated by everybody else, we are several billion people on this planet, uh, it is easily imaginable that we live an, an incredibly large and uh, detailed footprint of uh, uh, our uh, social activity in a way that is totally unprecedented in, in our history. Why does this matter? Why is it important? Well, the point is that precisely for the first time in history, we have a very detailed portrait of how society works. We have a new microscope allowing to see us as uh, bacteria in a culture that uh, do whatever they do, and we can be studied for our behavior, for our uh, choices, for our decision, at a scale that is to totally unprecedented so far. The word big data is due to the fact that these data are really extremely large. We generate uh, peta bytes of data every day, which is a really big, big number of uh, bits that uh, encode this information. And this is extremely uh, new, not only for the size, the volume, but also for the velocity and, uh, and the variety of this data. Velocity because this data arrive uh, at an incredible high speed. Imagine the video that we upload every day on, on, on YouTube or any other uh, video uh, platform. Imagine uh, all the messages that we exchange using social media or uh, chat services. This sum up to an incredible amount of information that is uploaded every day, creating also new challenges in, uh, for digital technologies for having the power and the possibility to manage such a large amount uh, and variety of information. And then the next question is, what to do with this? How can this be used for? And uh, uh, certainly there are many different purposes for which this data can be used that actually go beyond the original scope for uh, for which the data were collected. Why this uh, incredible availability of data makes a difference for, for science and society? Uh, th the point is that the level of observation in complex phenomena that we are uh, acquiring in the last few years thanks to, 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 to big data and to what is now called data science also, is uh, really affecting uh, the way we, we do science, the, the way we do business, and the way we relate to each other uh, in society in very profoundly. Talking about science, uh, science is actually uh, not only anymore validating in practice the theories that we have thought in, uh, in, in, in our offices or you know, in, in our brain. But it's actually more than that. It's uh, uh, finding patterns, finding uh, 
scientific hypothesis in data mm, that can uh, fuel the definition of novel theories that are better representation of, uh, of reality. This is true in the social sciences, in the economic sciences, but also in biology and, and in medicine today. Uh, just to make one example, if we are able to find out uh, lifestyle patterns that are related to uh, diseases in a surprising way, this has the possibility of creating novel uh, hypotheses for research in medicine and fostering advances that might not have been uh, found otherwise. And similarly for the social and economic sciences. Uh, for industry, well, for industry is really affected by the uh, availability of data in many different ways and, and certainly the, the most uh, uh, striking example is the advertising industry hmm, that has found uh, new totally different ways of uh, managing marketing and, and uh, advertising in a way that is extremely effective to offer to any individual person the services and products that are most likely uh, of interest for the individual person. Uh, a kind of dream of the marketing uh, people that uh, always somehow uh, wanted to have uh, at, a, at a global scale the same attitude that uh, the, the, the shop, uh, the proximity shop uh, uh, close to our house as in understanding completely the preferences of the nearby customers that, that shop every day physically in the shop. This of course is not any more possible physically in the, global, in the global market, but big data actually made it possible uh, in, in a different way. Because the, the desire, the interest, the, the uh, aspiration of, uh, of uh, any one of us can actually very well portrayed in, in data and therefore exploited to, uh, to make uh, very uh, well-targeted marketing offers in a, in, a, in a very personalized way. And, but this is only one example. Probably the most important example so far of uh, the applications of big data, but certainly not the, the only example for industry in general. Now we are really facing the industry 4.0 and the AI revolution for industry. And the AI revolution is mostly a revolution based on data, based on the ability of learning uh, intelligent uh, uh, behavior, intelligent machines from examples, from examples that are precisely represented in the big data that we uh, create, that machine or, or people create every day. You know, there's a very strong link connecting artificial intelligence, big data and data science. Uh, this uh, the, the amazing uh, development that uh, AI, artificial intelligent products, like uh, the automatic recognition of images, the robotic perception, the driverless cars, or uh, the uh, domotic uh, appliances that can assist uh, uh, people in, in intelligent ways, the automated translation of uh, natural languages between different uh, languages. All these are examples of artificial intelligence that is uh, fueled by data. In all these examples, machines learn to be intelligent by uh, generalizing from many examples created by people that generated labels for data to uh, learn from. Just to make one example, how can a machine tell that in a certain image uh, there is a cat? Well, the way to do that is to present many different images uh, that some uh, human uh, has uh, labeled as containing cats or not containing cats. Hmm? Once these images are sufficiently many and sufficiently representative of the, of the overall situation, eventually machine learning, which is a technique uh, developed to learn from data, is able to uh, generalize a systematic way of uh, telling whether a given Im image contains a cat or not. 
without the need of uh, uh, further human intervention. The human intervention is in providing the examples from, from which the machine learns. And this is something that, that occurs in all the striking uh, application of data science that we see today. This is going to disrupt uh, many industries and also many services that we uh, are already using or will be using uh, continuously, uh, very often without even noticing that this uh, AI learning uh, uh, things occurs behind the scene. And this is also why our data are so important, because they provide the fuel with which uh, the uh, artificial intelligent tools can uh, learn to be intelligent and can uh, produce intelligent artifacts, intelligent machines and intelligent uh, uh, services. <laughs>
uh, that have been installed on your car for insurance purposes because you subscribed a uh, pay-as-you-drive insurance uh, product, but as a side effect, you are delivering to the company your very, very detailed trips that you do every day with your car. And by putting together all these trips over at a city scale or a regional scale, you can create an amazing picture of uh, traffic and mobility, how uh, our trips uh, impact on cities, what kind of timetable we use to, to uh, uh, arrive or leave uh, the places where we go to work and study, uh, what, are the, uh, what is the geography of the places that we describe simply by moving around, doing our every everyday effect. You can create uh, statistical information like uh, uh, demographic information, not with census anymore, but with mobile phone data that uh, can use to have a very precise uh, idea of how many people are in any place and also how many commuters will go from a city to another how many visitors will visit a certain area and, and how could we organize uh, rescue and uh, emergency response in case of uh, natural di disasters. It is certainly true that uh, up to now the most widespread uh, business model for big data uh, has been developed by big corporations. A big uh, web corporation that were able to serve amazingly large user bases, uh, up to billion of users, uh, and uh, centralize uh, data about uh, uh, users that allowed uh, such companies to deliver very intelligent and very pervasive products. Right? But this is not the only possible model, and actually is a kind of primitive model for, for, uh, for data, which is, in a sense, uh, following again the path that has been common in history for many new uh, resources. Uh, imagine land in the Middle Ages or industrial capacity in, uh, in the 8th uh, century. There is a, an initial phase where a few monopolists or a few latifundists are essentially uh, pushing the new, the new economy, the new re industrial revolution towards a new path. But eventually, it, the, the, the very true part of this revolution is also to distribute much more in a broader sense in society so that the new revolution can really flourish, be it an agricultural revolution or an industrial revolution or like we are living today, a digital uh, a revolution based on digital information. So, while it is certainly true that right now we have uh, uh, big centralized monopolies for big data, it is also true that the, 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 the picture is rapidly changing towards a much more distributed ownership and distribution of information. <music> What we need today is really a new deal on data, a new deal on personal information. We uh, really need new gentle digital technologies that will help uh, individually, in, in, each of us individually, to uh, collect, organize, make sense and use the personal information that we generate every day. Even individual data are big data. Over uh, months, the amount of uh, the different uh, digital breadcrumbs 
that we generate in uh, all the different uh, digital services that we use is amazingly large. Even without counting uh, photos and videos, we create amazing quantity of uh, digital recordings with our activities. What do we do with this information? Uh, like uh, the robot in Blade Runner, uh, I would say that most of this uh, get uh, lost in the rain. They are simply forgotten. Only a little bit of this information ends up in the uh, big players' uh, servers. Most of our personal information is used by nobody, and we could use it instead, provided we have ways to collect this information, aggregate, make it meaningful to us, uh, and uh, uh, show how can we use this uh, information to improve our lifestyle, to improve the way we use public transportation, to align with our fellow citizen in accessing uh, crowded places, in uh, organizing uh, our life every day in a city, or to find out what we really need, hmm, to get in touch with the, the uh, services that uh, in any aspect of our life are important to, to, our, uh, to our experience. The complexity of our communities, of our societies, of our economics is always due to the interaction with others. Our decision influences the decision of others. Consider traffic. In traffic, whenever we decide to take our car to go from A to B, we are also affecting the decision of all our others concurring citizens that are traveling in the same time for going from somewhere to somewhere else. If we are able to organize our joint mobility in a smart way, we could probably do this with uh, better uh, timings, without delays, using much less energy, producing less pollution, and uh, having a safer and more lively environment. All this can only be achieved if we are intelligent uh, subjects that are powered by information and powered with the ability to exploit this information in interaction and in collaboration with others. This is the new deal that we need to, to create. The model with which uh, uh, social media and social networking platforms are organized today follow, of course, the main uh, mission of uh, this uh, business, which is, as we uh, already discussed, uh, online advertising and target marketing. This means that all these platforms have a an interest to maximize audience, right? to maximize likes, to maximize the visits to uh, the, the websites or the information or the products they recommend to users. The, the most obvious and the most effective means to increase the number of likes or increase the number of visits is to show people websites or products or services that they like. Right? If you are exposed to something that you feel close to your interest, you will have more probably the willingness to uh, click the link or to, or to like the post or to buy the product. Right? It's uh, an obvious uh, uh, mechanism that works because we humans uh, like what we like and are attracted by like-minded people, by like-minded uh, opinions, and with, uh, in general, things that are close to our interests and desires. This in itself does not seem anything evil, right? It seems uh, 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 an obvious trick that advertising has to uh, maximize and to draw our attention. But what if 
the network effect of this mechanism uh, when it is deployed, for instance, to uh, the distribution and diffusion of information. M many uh, scientific studies show today that the uh, so-called algorithmic bias of the platform, the fact that the platform will expose a person with like-minded uh, peers or with uh, uh, articles talking about things that we already are interested in, create uh, uh, echo chambers, create uh, uh, communities made of uh, people uh, that are very much like-minded, that are very much uh, against being contaminated from different ideas, that develop a more and more radical uh, uh, set of opinions of any controversial or non-controversial topic. And this is, of course, not healthy for democracy, not healthy for, for uh, uh, the di diversification of opinion uh, in, a, in a society. And diversification of opinion, this is another important issue that big data allow us to, to understand. Uh, the more diverse is a crowd of person, the more intelligent is the crowd in making collective decisions. Uh, if we have uh, uh, somehow monopolies of a few radical ideas segregated in the society, well, this kind of influence is very bad for the overall uh, intelligence of the, of the crowd, of the population, which can actually be very stupid and overall take uh, not really wise opinions in many different uh, uh, controversial issues. And the only way we have to preserve diversity or actually to boost diversity of opinion is just going on the opposite direction uh, compared to what uh, social media platforms are using today. Because if you propose to people, like-minded people, uh, peers and ideas, they are actually increasing polarization and radical ideas and they are decreasing the intelligence and the diversification of the crowds. If we want a different uh, uh, ecosystem for public conversation, we need to really engineer and think different platforms that are not uh, driven by uh, the uh, marketing idea of maximizing audience and likes. The GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, has a very veneristic and forward-looking uh, uh, clause that is about the right of explanation. What does it mean? It refers to automated uh, profiling and decision-making. Essentially, uh, the right of explanation means that, uh, first of all, Totally automated decision making is illegal, is prohibited in a certain uh, uh, legal or similarly relevant decision pertaining to people, like uh, obtaining a mortgage, a mortgage or, or, or a job. So it is necessary that there is a human decision makers in the interface between the subject of the decision and the automated uh, decision-making system that makes, that suggests the, the decision. But the point is that the subject, in the end, has anyhow the right of having an explanation of the decision. Why am I being refused the mortgage? Why I was not selected for the job? Why is this connected to AI and to big data? Well. The decision-making system that we are developing are based on artificial intelligence and big data. They learn uh, how to make uh, accurate and uh, intelligent decision based on experience. And the experience is represented in big data. Most of the new uh, AI models that uh, help humans to make decisions are actually black boxes. So they are very hard to be understood. They don't really provide an explanation why. They are simply very good at learning 
to make the right decision from the examples, but they are not good at all in explaining the reasons for the decision into a logic that it is meaningful and comprehensible for humans. This is precisely what the right of explanation calls for, meaningful explanations of decisions. So uh, we are, uh, in, in, with an intelligent requirement, uh, calling for a human-centric AI or an explainable AI that is able not only to make or suggest, or suggest decisions, but also to explain the logic of such decision. Why, and why this is important? Not only for transparency, which is, of course, extremely important, right? But also for being sure that this artificial intelligence has not learned from our bias, from our prejudice, from our discriminatory uh, behavior. A very important uh, chapter is that of uh, big data, AI, and the future of work, the future of our jobs. What uh, can we expect in the future of uh, employment and, and jobs? There is really a large array of different opinions on uh, this issue, ranging from uh, extremely pessimistic to extremely optimistic views by experts in different fields and even in the same fields. Uh, what uh, can be certainly said is that AI and big data can be an exploitative uh, technology. What do I mean by that? Let's make one example. Consider thousands of doctors around the world making everyday diagnosis of a certain disease, looking at the characteristics of their patients and the uh, an MRI of uh, scans of their patients. And imagine to collect all this in millions of uh, diagnoses from thousands of doctors altogether and uh, train some uh, artificial neural network or deep learning model to learn how to do this job putting together the experience of thousands of different persons. It's uh, not surprising that the end product of this can be an artifact that is better than any individual doctor in uh, uh, solving the problem with the extreme, the diagnosing problem with very high accuracy, probably better than any individual doctor. Okay. And now put yourself in the shoes of the doctors. Right? Uh, what should this new artifact uh, uh, do? In a sense, it has exploited the, the knowledge of the doctors and, to some extent, could, be, uh, could replace the doctor in at least part of their job. Maybe not complete their complete job, but in part of their job. So this is an example how uh, the, uh, this technology can seriously affect even works that are much higher level than we uh, suspected uh, uh, up to uh, only a few years ago. The discussion in the 90s was, yeah, the digital technology will disrupt uh, the lower levels of uh, our uh, job uh, spectrum, but actually with the, uh, the data science and AI revolution, we are actually very much uh, uh, able to begin uh, mechanizing, automating a uh, substantial part of high level, uh, higher level works, uh, not totally, but in, uh, in uh, uh, much, uh, in much part of it. Things about uh, uh, language translators, or think about uh, anything that can be somehow learned from the experience of many people doing uh, what once was perceived as a highly skilled uh, work. So certainly there will be a transformative effect on, uh, on, many, on many works, on most works. Most work will probably not be swept away, will be deeply transformed. In the medical doctor example, for instance, such a tool probably 
will not replace the diagnosing activity of the, of the medical doctors. For instance, if equipped with suitable explanation uh, technology, this could actually help doctors improve their diagnosis, providing better evidence from which the AI will be able to develop even better uh, automated tools. And therefore, the, the virtual loop between machines and humans should actually be two ways, in such a way that every uh, two uh, sides of the coin can exploit their own uh, specific abilities in tandem with the others. Because certainly humans have this ability to push through means and make connections in ways that machines cannot. And of course, machines have a, an incredible ability to learn from uh, examples, so generalizing in ways that is not affordable for humans for the, the sheer size of uh, data and of the problem. I am a wannabe data scientist. What should I do? How can I uh, grab this, uh, this uh, uh, job figure that, according to many observers, uh, is uh, the, the most fastly growing uh, uh, job family in a situation of reducing uh, employment and, and difficulty of, of the economy? Well, certainly becoming a data scientist uh, is a a uh, challenging story because you need to take into consideration three skill sets that are traditionally thought as uh, diverse and separated. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the digital information technologies competences to deal with data, being able to collect them, to integrate them, to process them, to integrate and, and make it available for many different algorithms. The second story is uh, statistics and data mining and machine learning. How to turn messy, not really meaningful data into sense, into something that makes sense for people, that can be uh, used to actually uh, derive information, knowledge, ability to uh, make decisions on top of this information. And then the third part of the skill sets is uh, the humanistic uh, part of the story. How to tell stories, how to use uh, language or images, visual imagination to uh, convey the information and the knowledge uh, extracted from data into the uh, desire of stakeholders, into the the, the tools that will make the knowledge and the information actionable, usable in, in, real, in real life. And actually, there is even a fourth aspect, which is ethics, responsible data science. You will be, as a data scientist, be dealing with uh, uh, mostly personal data of people. And to manage this data within privacy-preserving frameworks, and also value-preserving framework, where you will be actually asking yourself about what use will be done of this information is also key uh, competences. So essentially, if you want to become a data scientist, you can start from a plurality of different uh, uh, undergraduate stu uh, studies, but you need to push your graduate studies with, uh, uh, will mix all these different aspects together. You can, you can, of course, become a data scientist with, uh, with a specific expertise. You can be more fluent in IT, you can be more fluent in statistics, you can be more fluent in visualization, maybe. But in any case, you will be to be have a basic fluency uh, and mastering all these different aspects together. There are more and more uh, programs at uh, even undergraduate, mostly graduate, uh, master's and PhD level that uh, address this issue. My personal advice is to prefer those that are not only methodological, do not only emphasize the basic tools for uh, computer science, statistics, data mining, AI, and visualization, 
but also exposed to interdisciplinary applications.